Okay, good morning everybody. This is the site selection meeting of the 72nd World Science Fiction Society. Um, we, sorry for the slight delay in starting today. We used to try to start this session on time, but uh, we have a uh, few funny things going on. There was no, we were, well, we, our secretary is not here. It's due to a medical problem. It doesn't sound too serious. It doesn't actually affect her, but she's involved with it. So we have a temporary secretary, Kevin Stanley. Um, the other business meeting officers are our videographer, Lisa Mays, uh, assistant timekeeper, Jesse Pershing, uh, timekeeper, Jolie Slate, um, and I'm presiding officer of secretary is Linda Denneroff, who usually does all the work, uh, but for a small part here, it's Kevin will be doing it. Um, Let's see, uh, this session will be recorded, as always are, and anybody can take pictures or record things, uh, unless the, we vote to disallow that, which is uh, very rare. Uh, there's a microphone up front, and people should come up and speak to that if they want to be heard. The attendance list, uh, but partly related to this uh, secretarial replacement uh, temporarily, uh, the attendance list wasn't available, so we've had the papers going around. Um, we need to make any announcements or ask where that is or anything like that. Or anything. Okay, it's, it's going around. So write your name. Um, there are business meeting attendee ribbons at the head table, the same as the last two days. So if you didn't get one before and want one, uh, you should help me get one. Then please silence your cell phones or uh, other noise-making devices. So as I said, this is the site selection meeting. So the uh, special order of business for this meeting, the highest priority, uh, is the results of the site selection. So we have the Accelerator Committee report. Jared, I'm Bob McIntosh, for those who don't know me. <clears throat> Besides the site selection that uh, we finished up yesterday, we had 778 valid votes of which 22 were no preference. Leading those with preference with 756, with the need to win, 379. The results, Xerxes in 2010 got one vote. Three Legs Town in Ohio got one vote. <laughs> Sitka, Alaska, one vote. Minneapolis in 73, one vote. Now, the next two, I would be reliably told, is actually the same place in Finland, but uh, because the individuals who put it down there either spelled it wrong or were handwriting was atrocious, we separated the two out. Marineham, one. Mancham, one. Hell Norway, got one. Helsinki 2017, got one. Copper Harbor, Michigan, one. Boston in 16, one. Christmas in Boston, 2020, got two. Helsinki, got six. There were 13 invalid uh, ballots. There were four, none of the above. And Beijing got 70 votes. And the winner, Kansas City, with 651 votes.
we feel that it's very important for Worldcon to get that kind of, uh, uh, those kind of people involved, and we support them 100%. So uh, this has all been much more fun than you can possibly imagine. Uh, it seems, I want to thank our supporters. Uh, it seems cliche to say we couldn't have done it without you, but we really, really couldn't have. Uh, I would in particular like to thank uh, our one senator, we did get one, uh, Paris McBride Martin, who at will be our guests at the convention. And I would like to thank our advisors, Patty Wells, uh, Mark Olson, and Ben Yellow, who have been invaluable to us. And fandom in general um, has been wonderful to us. Our supporters, Midwestern fandom and beyond, we could not have done this without you. If you're one of the Kansas City supporters, please raise your hand because you all have just been fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, and of course, we've been... Um, We've been uh, bribing you all along with the thought of Kansas City Barbecue, so I would like to introduce you to our pitmaster, Toastmaster! Toastmaster!
That's right.
Sharon? Um, there is a website at www.mid-americon2.org. Our, our website is mid-americon2, it's a therapist in the world, dot org. And it's up. And it's up. You just got that number. Yes, sir. How far are your hotels from the convention center? Uh, the closest are one block, the furthest uh, are about two blocks. They're all come together and it's all the hotels there are. How far are the hotels from the convention center? Pardon? Remember to repeat the questions, I can't hear them. The, uh, he asked if it was outdoor or indoor walking. It will be outdoor walking. There is a uh, have a trail from the uh, Marriott, but it, it, it's not used very frequently in those sort of parking garage. And stuff like that. Yeah. Yes, sir. What temperature are you expecting during the day? It will be comparable to Texas, but not as not quite as hot, not quite as humid. And it varies with the year. This year actually has been unusually cool and rainy for August. Are you really sure you want to volunteer? <laughs> We're going to try our best. Will you have both pork and beef barbecue? Yes, and chicken. And lamb. And lamb. And lamb. And lamb. <laughs> Will you cook the crispy long lamb. enough? <laughs> Maybe not for you. <laughs> There's lots and lots of different restaurants in Kansas City, not just barbecue. Are you vegetarian or vegan? Vegetarian. Because I highly recommend the cheesy corn bake that comes with some of the barbecue. And there's the best frozen custard in the universe. Yeah. 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 Are there more questions? Any other questions? Uh, if not, I can stay up here for a second. I have an announcement. To... I just want to mention real quickly that we have uh, quite a few big t-shirts left, and they will be on sale for half price at our table if you would like one of the big t-shirts with a cool old logo. Okay, stay up here for a second. Hey, Pat, can you tell me about First of all, congratulations for winning. Yeah. Closer. You honestly can't hear me talk, okay? Yes. yes. All right. On behalf of One Star Con 3, I'd like to present you this pass along funds check in the amount of $20,000. <laughs> and since you couldn't hear me, congratulations. Thank you very much. victory party tonight the Kansas City Pavilion starting at 9 p.m. And there will be barbecue. <laughs> Thank you all very, very much. So the meeting will be in order. <laughs> the next order of business is uh, question time for SASPON. Uh, they can make a presentation up to five minutes and people can ask questions. When will hotel reservations be open? The Housing Bureau would be turned on for all members on September 16th. Anyone else? Will there be barbecue? <laughs> <laughs> yes, actually, Cedar Pine family. <laughs> Uh, 
You can request a party room or suite by sending an email to parties at sasquan.org. If you specifically want a suite, also send the request to suites at sasquan.org, because not everybody wants a suite. Uh, but you can do that at any time. But in order to process your request, you will still need to make a generic room reservation in the party hotel, which is the Davenport. And then send us the reservation number so that we can connect it up with your request. What was that address again? On your website. Uh, they will be shortly. Okay. Okay, sent. <laughs> That's efficient. I love living in the future. <laughs> if, if your party, party is in the Davenport, which is about four blocks away from the convention center, what time does the convention center close? Question? The question is, what time does the convention center close, specifically in relation to the parties being in the Davenport? The convention center will close when we're done with it. There are some budgetary issues to concern that concerns when we can afford to close it. If we have it 24 hours, but if we want to keep it open beyond a certain time, we have to pay more for staffing. So a lot of that depends on programming and exhibit uh, events, but uh, the parties will probably start more or less around 9 p.m. like they traditionally do. So the convention center will still be open and going, at that point, if I understand what programming and events plan. Well, uh, for programming and events, uh, the two main events, the Masquerade and the Hugo Ceremony, will be in the ICC, INB, INB uh, Theater, which is 2,700 raked seats by a fixed stage, so it should be spectacular. Those will start at 8 o'clock on Friday and Saturday, and they will go probably until midnight. The actual uh, convention center, the events will probably be done in the late afternoon and move to one of the hotels for dancing. Uh, the program, I believe, will end by 9 or 10 p.m. They will either be in the Davenport or the Double Tree. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I need to remember. Uh, where will things like filking and overnight gaming and that sort of thing be? Right now they're scheduled for the Double Tree, which is attached to the convention center. They may move should we get enough money into the Davenport. I don't think we'll know that before September 16th. We'll probably know that next spring. Because we're using a very flexible housing growth system, even if you make a reservation, you can move it, right? So I don't want people to feel like there's a rush and a panic to like get in on you know midnight, of, you know, uh, of, of September 16th to get your, your your rooms. We have lots of rooms, so. You know, you should be able to move around this and work with the CBD to have it go if you decide that something changes and you want to move around it. Um, I assume the content is also in the Davenport. Sorry, I assume the con suite is also in the Davenport. No, the con suite is currently scheduled to be in the Double Tree. Right, both con suite and staff den will be at the Double Tree for convenience during the day. Only the parties are currently scheduled, for sure, in the Davenport. And they will not move. I believe so. Uh, con suite, right. Uh, con suite will be keeping later hours like it traditionally does. Right at the moment, there is no plans to move it to the Davenport. It's, a, it's on the wish list. 
for some people. But right now, I would say it's very safe to go ahead and book it into the Double Tree for filthing. And I know how you are, don't like to travel with instruments and all of that sort of stuff. So, it, yeah, I'm, I would say it's 90% certain it's going to be there. Will there be rooms with kitchenettes? Uh, I will double check and get back with you on that, just to make sure I'm responding accurately. After closing ceremonies, uh, we're going to be doing a panel right in the same room called Sasquatch Listens, where we listen to everything you had to say about this convention. So, good, bad, whatever you want to tell us, uh, we'll be happy to listen and take notes tomorrow uh, after closing ceremonies. In the same room as closing, in the same room as closing ceremonies, right after. Quite like the accents here, could you do that? Sasquatch Lessons will be in Capitol Suite 13 on Monday at 4.30. Just, just know that this is not a critique of this convention. Um, if people want to complain to us, this is not what it's for. We want to have get some constructive ideas from you, what you think works well, what you'd like to see, this sort of thing. Thank you. <coughs> Sorry for the misery. Thank you. Yes, we love the blue. Next item of business is presentations by bidders for 2017. Uh, I believe there's a few of them. So, if they, they decided not to any order, you listen in order. Of, what? You listen in order in the agenda. Sure, okay. <laughs> we, we didn't decide on one, you told it to us already. I, I guess that was the, the order came that the secretary came up with. It was, curiously enough, is uh, in alphabetical order. Uh, <laughs> well, you know, know, you know, know. Question from the tech table. Excuse me, Mr. Chair. Yes? Uh, question from the tech table. Um, do any of the groups require sound? You mean sound for a besides video, the mic for a video? Thank you. Well, New Orleans has a video. There, there'd be after these. New Zealand. Yeah. 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 Okay, DC, go ahead. As you're probably aware, I'm Warren Buff. This is Michael Nelson. We're co-chairing the bid for Washington DC in 2017. Uh, we are bidding the Marriott Boardman Park, which is a, which will be a single facility. We will have all our function space there with an 1100 room block. When we need overflow, we can go across the street to the Omni. The dates we're bidding are August 16th through 20th, of course, 2017. While we have plenty of other things we've told you before, we think that uh, with five minutes we should proceed to question time. Any questions for us? How close are you to the subway, public transportation? The metro stop is directly across the street from us. Well, the, the, the main escalator down is directly across the street. There is an elevator down on the corner of the hotel property. Uh, the station itself is below the hotel. What station? It is the Woodley Park slash Zoo metro station because we are actually at the same, yeah, right next to the zoo. Uh, it's about two blocks away from us. Uh, we are closer to the zoo metro stop than the zoo. Renee? Any chance of having passes to the zoo along with our memberships? <laughs> he asked if there are passes to the zoo along with our memberships. Oddly enough, it's a Smithsonian institution, and like all of the Smithsonian institutions, is free to the public. <laughs> Uh, I'd like to mention that the Zoo X, the, the grounds, which
which is over 100 acres, that actually opens at 6 a.m. every day. So wow. if you're an early morning person, it's, it's great to walk around and get some Strong exercise. Too. No problem. I believe uh, you're asking how close it is to central DC. Uh, DC is kind of a funny shape, but I think you're asking about the National Mall. It is a mile and a half from the mall or three metro stops. Uh, you mentioned that all of the metro stops have elevators. Yes, all of the metro stops have elevators. They are accessible. Yeah, uh, yes, Teresa's pointing out that uh, when, the, when there is a malfunction with those elevators, the Metro will pr provide a signage telling you where to get off that is most convenient for you. Elspeth? Well, it doesn't just involve signage and where it's most convenient for you. If it's a distance, they also supply buses to where you are trying to go. Uh, Elspeth is correcting me. She's saying it doesn't provide signage saying uh, where it's convenient, it's saying where to go to get a bus back to uh, it does where you want to go. No, it, it okay. says this metro stop and that metro stop is the closest it has elevator access and if that is any distance from your original stop, they generally provide buses. Okay, they, they, she's saying they provide buses and they give instructions on where to get them. Yes, the, the other buses are actually accessible. <laughs> Elspeth? I'm going to ask two leading questions, sorry. Um, what is the neighborhood like, Warren? Uh, the neighborhood we are in is a largely residential neighborhood. It is wooded. Uh, it is much greener than what you're used to seeing at a World Con. Uh, the restaurants across the street serve both the hotel and the local residential community, so they remain open on weekends and have nice long evening hours. And many of them have uh, breakfast buffets. Uh, many of them have uh, breakfast buffets and uh, sidewalk seating. It's very Do we have barbecue? Yeah. <laughs> Todd. Where is the nearest supermarket? Uh, we will get back to you on that one, but your son knows. <laughs> the, the nearest supermarket is down the hill about a quarter mile at uh, the Hilton. I think the Hilton is a safe way in there. Thank you, John. Yeah. <laughs> I know there's a whole Foods not too far from the hotel. A little further down. And there's a yeah, safe way two stops up on the Metro. Right, the social place. As people can tell, a lot of us are native to the city and know the area quite well. Time has expired. For Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Our next presentation, uh, at least in the order of the agenda, will be Helsinki.
Oh. Yeah. There's a heck of a lot happening in Helsinki, and you're going to be particular next year. The second thing is um, the restaurant scene in Helsinki is pretty cool. Um, we have on the convention center uh, 21 <coughs> restaurants on site, and Helsinki currently has six Michelin star restaurants, if that's more what you're looking for. Personally, I don't do like slightly less, uh, slightly more affordable ones. But we have everything for everyone on that kind of And um, yeah, the third thing I was going to mention is that if you want to get a good taste of what a, an international convention in Finland is like, we're running one next year. We're doing Archipelagon which is a convention we're doing on the Orland Islands between Finland and Sweden. We'll be throwing a party for that later tonight and announcing a new guest of honor as well. And I'm happy to take questions. Does Helsinki have barbecue? <laughs> <laughs> yes, but not as good as you'll get in Kansas City. <laughs> Everywhere in Europe. Oh, sorry, the question is where can you fly non stop to Helsinki? And the answer is everywhere in Europe, um, most big places in Asia. Helsinki is um, the main North European hub for travel between Europe and uh, East Asia. So we've got daily flights to three destinations in Japan. But honestly, that's not what you're asking. Uh, New York is currently, I think, the only uh, direct connection between the US and the North Pole, North America, and Helsinki. So effectively, what you need to do is what I've been doing while going to the US this whole time, is fly to somewhere like um, Amsterdam, or London, or Frankfurt, or Paris, and then connect to your destination. Um, in all the bidding journeys I've been doing to different connections in the US, I have not had to, no I lie, San Antonio was three flights. But there are two flight connections in pretty much every way imaginable. The dates are Wednesday 9th of August to Sunday 13th of August 2017. Uh, the question was about the price range of the hotels. They are going to be as affordable as we can make them. We're still negotiating, so we don't have really final rates for you. And the thing is, Helsinki is to some extent a tourist destination. That means that the city has a lot of hotel capacity. Even something the scale of Wellcome doesn't really take that big a portion of it. Which means that yes, we'll have hotel blocks, but we'll have hotel blocks in multiple hotels and you'll be able to find a hotel from other sources. Um, the starting rates for proper hotel prices are going to be, I think, around 80 euros. Uh, sorry, it's too morning for me to really probably think of dollars. About a hundred dollars. And of course, there, there's not really an upper end. But, the currency is euros. Sorry? Is the currency euros? Oh yes, euros is what we use. Speculate that approximately for Google, 80 euros is 110 dollars. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear. Just 80 euros is 110 dollars. Yeah, Google is good. Thank you. Uh, so we're actually kind of running out of time. Is there any critical question? Uh, uh, we should move on to the next question. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So in Alfred Ward's next uh, agenda was Japan. 2017 uh, presentation. Hello, my name is Kyoko Fushi. I am a committee member of Nippon in 2017 and I would like to introduce our committee members here. 
and this is Miss Hideaki Kawai, he is a co-chair of our bid. And Tomoki Konama, who is uh, our co-bid chair of our bid. And I would like to also present, um, introduce you the Mr. Yamamoto, he is from Shizuoka City Convention Tourism Board. So we have all the help from Shizuoka Prefecture and Shizuoka City that we are hosting our World Cup. And our date? Uh, August 24th to 28th in 2017 and the location is in Shizuoka Convention and Art Center uh, called Grand Ship. We have a very nice uh, ship shaped convention center which is in all at the right of the foot of the Mount Fuji. So you will be able to see Mount Fuji from convention center and we have uh, the conference rooms on the up part of the convention center so you can see actually view the lovely views of Mount Fuji from uh, the, the, the conference rooms. Shizuoka is the, the center of Japan. It's about one hour ride from Tokyo Station and you can reach Tokyo Station from Narita Airport or Haneda Airport. We have two international uh, airports in Tokyo and from Haneda to Tokyo is about 30 minutes ride by train and from Narita to Tokyo station is about one hour ride uh, by train. So it's actually two hours ride or two, one and a half ride from the airport to the convention site. And the foreigners have the privilege to have uh, the JR pass which is about $100 and it's free for one week. So the, the rates are very good for it. And also we have in Shizuoka uh, we have a space education center of JAXA, which is equal equivalent of NASA in the USA. So there's many space museums, uh, marine science museum, and we also have a modern art museum, a very good one with good broaden collection. And also, with the, uh, Shizuoka is famous for miniature models manufacturer, uh, Bandai and Tamiya. So you can go to those museums as well and shop your um, cars, mini miniature cars and robots. Also, you, uh, Shizuoka is known for good seafood and they have very best tuna and eels and also a large fish market. So you can have all the fun with the fish, seafood thing around Shizuoka. Any questions? Yes. Oh yes, um, Shizuoka, actually Grand Ship and Shizuoka City doesn't have a hot spot onsen, but um, the onsen is about 30 minutes ride by uh, Shinkansen. <coughs> uh, we do have hotels in Shizuoka with, that have onsen in the hotel, so you can enjoy spa, hot spa, springs in the hotel. Yes? How many restaurants do you have near your convention centre? Okay. <laughs> the, the question is how many restaurants were near the convention centre? Unfortunately, we don't have uh, restaurants near the convention center, but we do have a cafe and a restaurant and a lounge inside the convention center. But um, if you go to the next station, it's about a uh, five minutes ride by train, we have about 100 or more good restaurants, including pubs. Um, they run about 10, every 10 minutes. Uh, sorry, it's about 5 minutes each, um, every 5 minutes. Uh, the last train stops at 11 p.m. and starts from 5 a.m. Any questions? Yes, please. That will be the last question. Okay. 
Okay, uh, can you explain your hotel situation? Are you using one large hotel? How close are they to the, uh, to the convention center? Um, unfortunately, there's no accessing hotel near the convention center, but the, most of the hotels are situated, located on uh, the Shizuoka station, which is one stop next to the convention site. And we have about... We have about 20 hotels around it, and we will... Um, we haven't discussed this about the, uh, with the hotel uh, union in Shizuoka City, but we will, be, we will soon be in um, discussion with how we can use the uh, hotels. We are, there, there are hotel union in Shizuoka City and we will be in talks with them soon. Uh, okay, the time has expired. Thank you very much for your presentation. How are you doing, Miss Good. Okay. All right. I am Katie Shea, and I am representing Montreal in 2017. We are bidding for the Labor Day weekend. Uh, as some of you might know, last night was hockey night, so forgive any lapses on my part. And this is Jocelyn Perot from our beautiful Palais de Congrès, which will be our main convention facility for uh, Labor Day weekend should we be awarded the privilege of holding, holding the 75th WorldCon. A uh, couple of notes. Our hotels, five of them are directly across the street. We have another um, set that are within two, three blocks. I'm trying to remember all the other questions that went through so we can skip seeing them again. Uh, the nearest grocery store is a five minute walk from the Palais. And we too also sit on top of a metro station. And I'm a little short, so please wave at me so I can see you if you're asking me questions. And I'll take questions now. Ah, yes. Which? Labor Day is the first weekend in September that covers the first Monday. And my brain won't cough up the dates. It's somewhere, I think, um, for 2017, it is August. I know we have the convention center for August. 29th to September 6th. So it's that weekend within it. September 5th, sorry. Ah, um, Elspeth? You get the question out the way, it's the usual one about airports and accessibility. Um, let me clarify a little bit about accessibility. Are you talking mobility about accessibility or transportation? Transportation, also mobility. Also mobility, but the main thing is people in general getting in. People in general getting in from the airport, of course we have the usual taxis, car services, there is a special 747 bus, which is, it's a, may I? Okay, accessibility to and from the airport from the convention center and the hotels that are around the convention center, it's by car or taxi only 20 minutes. Uh, the fare at this time is about to $40. Now we have a shuttle, a shuttle bus that is only nine dollars, so which is very good for uh, the little budgets, um, and uh, so very easy to get from the uh, the airport. And we will have a greeting um, booked there at the airport for the WorldCon uh, event in the 17th. Should we be awarded? And we have uh, many, many direct flights from Europe, uh, to name a few, Paris, London, Madrid, uh, and from the States also, Chicago, New York, Atlanta, <coughs> Dallas. Does that answer your question, Elsa? It, it's really, really good, and if you can't find something that you like, I'll personally find something for you. May I add, we made the Gourmet Magazine in 2006. I mean, we love food, and we have over 
hundreds of restaurants near the convention center. Anybody else? Oh yes, there are several restaurants inside the convention center. If you don't want to walk to go get food, just go downstairs at, at, at the, at the um, what do we call it, promenade? At the pedestrian walk. There's a Tim Hortons, there's a convenience store. There are multiple restaurants ranging from choose your own style of noodle rice stir fry to um, sit down, formal. Um, I believe there's a, or there was, and uh, Hunter's restaurant, which did game. Oh, sorry. Animal game, not people game. Yeah. <laughs> Food. Yes. Oh, yeah. Um, the fireworks competition dates are not within our control, but we. May I? Oh, yes. May I? Okay. Okay. Uh, these fireworks are amazing. Now, uh, during the time that uh, you guys will be there, the firework competition will be over now. We're celebrating in 17 three major anniversaries, the 375th of Montreal, the 150th of Canada's Confederation, and the 50th of Expo 67. So there will be uh, many parties around, celebration and fireworks. When? We do not know yet. The program is not out. Thank you to the time has expired for your presentation. Thank you very much. I believe that concludes the 2017 bidders. Okay, I, I believe that the presentations beyond this are the discretion based on availability of time. I think we do have time available. Uh, so, uh, 2018. Uh, New Orleans first. Yeah. Can we do New Orleans first in alphabetical order? Okay. Just so the tech people can do the New Orleans, New Orleans first. Uh, it's fine with me. So.
the Hilton and the Marriott, which are attached to the convention center, contracted. We are negotiating with additional neighboring hotels for uh, sleeping blocks. Uh, and we'll have more detailed information about what's in our block later. But about what size is the hotel block? Or the hotel going to be? Dave, what size are the hotel blocks going to be? The total, we have about 2,000 rooms. Total of 2,000 rooms. My hotelier is on those these things. So we have uh, probably a total of about 2,000 rooms in the projected block that we have reserved for the uh, San Jose CDD. Uh, with the Fairmont, I'm sorry, not the Fairmont, we're not using the Fairmont except for sleeping space. No function space, no parties, no nothing like that in the Fairmont, only sleeping rooms. And not all that many. Thank you for clapping for that. <laughs> <laughs> so we have about 375 rooms reserved in the Mar Marriott and about 300 rooms in the Hilton right now. With a convention center expansion, uh, we have actually a very nice new... Oh, I'm sorry. The question was, would we use the uh, Civic Auditorium across the street for the uh, Hugo's and Masquerade? At this point, that's not planned, as the convention center has expanded. We have a large new ballroom that is um, state-of-the-art. It's you know, very nice, very wonderful. I've been to an event in that. Uh, they also added additional breakout space on the floor below the new ballroom. And so that's where we anticipate uh, using the uh, using for Cuba's Masquerade as the new ballroom that they have there. I was a workmanship judge for Masquerade in the Civic Auditorium. I am intimately familiar with how suboptimal that space is, and we really don't want to use it again. Uh, Other than renting a car, what are the transport options from SFO? Oh, a question I love. What are the transport options? <coughs> Just from SFO, but generally. So, San Francisco Airport, okay, San Jose Airport, is about four miles from our facility, and there is a bus bridge to light rail, which will drop you right from the convention center. San Francisco International Airport is about 30 miles away. There is a BART extension that will get you to the Millbrae uh, uh, Caltrain station. The Millbrae Caltrain station will get you about 10 blocks away from our convention center. And if that 10 blocks is something you don't feel like walking, and I wouldn't argue with that, I walk that kind of thing, but not luggage. There is a light rail uh, stop at the main train station, which again, the light rail will drop you right in front of the convention center. And for those of you who are familiar with Carte Orange and Oyster, we have a system called Clipper. So even though you have multiple transit authorities, you can pick up a Clipper card, load it with, load it with cash, and it's a contactless tap-in, tap-out system, so you don't have to buy separate tickets for each of those services. Um, we also have Oakland International Airport um, in Oakland, which is also about 30 miles away. And I believe at that point we should have BART service from Oakland International Airport at least down to uh, Berryessa, where there will be uh, bus service and light rail service. Uh, and again, all clipperable. So we have plenty of options to fly in, and we have some Okay, by European standards, pretty awful mass transit, but by American standards, pretty seriously good mass transit, unless you're someone like, you say, from New York, where transit really works. So then, and the other option is we'll be looking at a, a discount through shuttle service, either, uh, uh, we're way over. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Any other 2018 bidders wish to present? Okay, 2019. 2019 bidders wish to present. Yep. Or answer questions. Or Hi, sir. Sure. Hi, man. Sorry, go ahead. Hello, my name is James Bacon. I'm the uh, bid chair for the Double 2019 Worldcom bid. And uh, I'll probably take any questions if you exist. Speak with mic, please. Yeah. Let's look it up. Tilted, tilted. Like you can't 
Okay, any questions, please? No questions? Oh, no questions. Okay, questions, go ahead. What's the food like you got? Uh, we have some food. <laughs> Potatoes, mostly. <laughs>
free to ask me any question you like, or we have a team downstairs as well who will be happy to answer any questions. Thanks very much. Um, both, both cities, by the way, have uh, food in very 
right, right, right there. Actually, I'm just going to say right there. I can literally walk across the street. Great places to be. Any other questions? Who is responsible for the community? Cool. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, sorry. Can I listen? Yeah, someone looking at me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry, Dave. So, um, for first question, um, you know, it's been a while since I've been here. How many rough human beings do you expect at the convention? Second question, how many sheep do you expect at the convention? <laughs> the, the first question was how many rough human beings are expected at the convention? I feel all really rough right now myself, so who knows. Uh, and then how many sheep might be expected at the convention? Um, rough human beings were, ba were basing it on Aussie Club numbers, so 2,000-ish. Um, that's what we know we can do. So we can actually go higher than that with, um, with our Go a bit higher than that. We're not cannot approach this level, we're not expecting this level. Um, sheep, bring your own. <laughs> I must point out that Dave is in New Zealand have been behind us 100%, they've given us lots of information, they've uh, some support sponsorship. and sponsorship, support, they call it support. Oh, sorry. Politics, you can't call it sponsorship. Support. They have been so, so good to us. They look upon it as this whole sort of team effort to <coughs> get behind this bit. Sorry, I mean, Kakapo. No. Yes, Kakapo, uh, which is a type of bird. Um, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe if they fly in from the from the actually they're in there. I <laughs> See, that's my that, that's the best I can do. You mean the cat See, I, I don't know what the bird is. However, Catapai, which is New Zealand's only poison spider, hangs out in the same gym as the One more question. There are, um, I haven't got the website open. There are, in Auckland, there are 6,000 hotel rooms. Near the Uh, Six to eight? Just let me talk, thank you. There are 6,000 hotel rooms within 15 minutes, and um, about 2,000 within five, and the convention center has two hotels attached directly to it, which are about 900 rooms. Um, so 905 rooms, sorry. <laughs> the notes in front of me. But it's, but it's almost <coughs> half of what we need directly attached to the convention center. Uh, Wellington has uh, 2,000 within 2,000 rooms within 15 minutes, and um, about 500, 600 within one to, one to five minutes of, of the uh, walking. 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 Um, and in fact, in Wellington, there is a backpack that's directly on. Uh, for those of you who wish to go by to restaurants, you walk out the door. <laughs> okay. Your, your time is expired. Thank you. Thank you.
Yeah, what, 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 what do you do? Sorry. Oh. Hi, uh, Chicago is uh, bidding to host the Richard J. Daly World Science Fiction Convention in uh, 2022. Um, and uh, beyond that, I don't think you need to know much. You're all going to be there, you all know it. You're all going to pay double, you all know it. Um, because we're that good, you all know it. Uh, any questions? That is not true. What is true is if we win the bid, we're moving it to Colorado Springs and holding it in Kent's house. <laughs> Kent, however, will not get a membership. So bad, it's going to be nicer. We need to use the lights. Um, the Richard Day Day, J. Daly Hotel will sadly be destroyed at that point. Um, no, oh, we, dear. <laughs> um, it, it, it is exceedingly unlikely that we will be at the Hyatt again. Um, we've, got, we've had large panels about that. Those of you who have heard it will know why. Any other questions? Yeah, any questions? Do we have a ball pit? Do we have a ball pit? <laughs> I, I believe you will note that Chicago is home of the ball pit. Um, Chicago is, is a pretty good city for public transport. Um, the, the, the city lays out like the spokes of a wheel and our train system covers that well and there are buses to get you all over the place. Um, we don't have as much as New York City, but we don't need as much as New York City. Other than NYC, I believe Chicago is the best public transit in the United States. Great. Thank okay. you very much. Thank you. Please remember to repeat questions into the microphone. Please remember to repeat questions into the microphone. Questions from the floor, I think. Yes, sir. 
Do you know what Paris Disney's uh, policy on all costumes is? This is a question we thought we were going to be asked. We are investigating it with them. At the moment, their policy is changing as of November this year. There will be no Disney characters in the hotels or in the Disney village where the convention center is. All Disney characters will be in the parks from November this year. So we do not believe there will be a problem with people dressing as Disney characters as long as they display their convention band. We need to get that confirmed. What about non-Disney characters? <coughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's trying to get difficult to find non-Disney science fiction characters. <laughs> <laughs> I think that your estimate for attendance may be slightly low, particularly in light of this weekend. Fans want to come to a World City, so if it starts to look like you're going to get 5,000 people, can you expand to that? Agreement? Yes, we can. Uh, there is another convention center being built on site at the moment. That will have a main ballroom of over 5,000 theater staff. There was also, if that doesn't get built, there is a Disney arena there at the moment where they hold indoor football, basketball, and other sporting events, and that can seat four and a half thousand years of time as well. So the backup plan is, if we do get beyond our size, we will be looking at using that main arena for the Hugo Awards and the main, and the, uh, and the main event in Nice Way in the Hugo. It's too far out at this time. I was asked what language we were looking at. At the moment, the, the big committee is the Anglo French Convention Committee. Um, we are it's a small team of five. We are looking for experience and we're, we're reaching out to uh, other, other continents around the world. We know French fandom is small. We know that French fandom and cannot pull this off alone, and we're looking to put, to, to make this World Con a World Con. We know every year that all people from all over the world come together, they help the run the World Con, and what we're trying to do in uh, 2023, basically, with um, Helsinki 2017, and um, the steam rail that is Dublin in 1919, and hopefully that will bring... 2019. Yeah, 2019. <laughs> <laughs> Our bid share was looking at 2019 to go against Ireland and it took a lot of persuasion to shake some common sense into and say, no, please, we don't want to do that, it's too scary, because we'll lose. Uh, so we only have time for one or two more questions. Then. On the subject of the um, languages, if, if it comes to it, does they already have everything in place for simultaneous translation, but it's possible we could do multilingual? Yeah, there are translation groups. They are used to um, a lot of languages being spoken in. Um, all, all the cast members speak about three or four different languages, and, there is, and they do a lot of multinational conventions there with simultaneous sort of translation with verbal uh, headsets, so they will be able to do multi stream programming in different languages if, it, if they need to. But in my experience, everyone switches to English in one way or another. Given the multiple uh, convention centers that you mentioned, could you talk about how either or spread out the facilities will be in, in both in relation to the facilities yeah. and hotels the, the two convention centers are opposite each other along the lake it's a five minute walk between one convention center to the other convention center <coughs> and it's not the same distance as this is the, this long atrium here on the, on the maps we've got down the stage we'll have a look it looks a long way but it's only because the use of force perspective that this allows to do it looks a long distance it's only a five minute walk the train station, the RER station that takes you from the Eurostar uh, from the UK, the TGV from Charles de Gaulle, and the RER from Paris is only an eight minute walk to the convention centre. Um, and everything is very close. It's a five minute walk. There's 20 restaurants nearby, and, they, and, and there is a barbecue restaurant as well. <laughs> <laughs> One more question. Chair is Celine Rie. Yeah, yeah and we were asked about our experiences. Uh, we have a little bit. Um, our big chair is Celine Rie, and she doesn't actually work on World Con. She does all organise a literature festival in, in, in France, or that basically it brings in about 3,000 people every year with multiple stream programs, and she does have some experience of that. Um, on the UK side of things, we have um, Chris O'Shea, who's been uh, Easter Con co chair, and we also worked on a few World Cons. Um, our advisors at the moment are um, Emilio Ario from Finland, who's leading the Finland bid, um, 
Adam Beatty from the United States, uh, Mike Sparks from the Hague, and, and you all know it's out in the desert somewhere at the moment. Uh, and myself, um, I helped with the UK 2005 World Cup bid, um, traveling around with the attending conventions throughout the day and flying back in. So, so we've got a bit of world time experience, but we are, it's a small committee, it's, it's, it's nine years out, we've got seven years towards the bid, we're hoping to get more people involved, more experience to help us bring the world time to Paris. Thank you. So I hope we'll move on to uh, other business at this point. Um, I have your Paris uh, USB zip here. Yeah. Um, whatever convenient, it's up here. Uh, so the only thing uh, remaining really is committee appointments. Uh, so, committee, this is a list of committees. We eliminated the hero committee. So moving on specifically, uh, this is the Mark Protection Committee. I, I, I believe this is that correct. I had a slight crash in PowerPoint before this, so I had to hopefully have recovered. The only new information on here is that uh, Kansas City, the 2016 World Congress, has appointed Mark Olson as their representative to the Mark Protection Committee. Uh, this also shows the results of the elections uh, yesterday. Uh, other committees, the nitpicking and vice president committee. Uh, okay. So I'm appointing Kevin Stanley chair, and the membership is uh, Jared Dashoff, myself, Tim Ellingworth, and Jesse Pershing. I uh, actually I changed my mind. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let's edit this slide. Because uh, Mr. Sandley is chairing the business meeting next year, I'm appointing myself chair. Uh, apparently, <laughs> considering it was the chair that's just been deposed who suggested it, um, the World Commoners Guide and Control Committee is continuing uh, unchanged. Uh, the, the chair continues to have the authority to appoint new members. Uh, here has gone away. It says the formalization of long list entries committee also continues unchanged, with the chair having the authority to continue the authority to appoint new members. This is the uh, new Neil McGill Hugo Study Committee. Point uh, Katie Rask as chair, and the members list is there, and the chair has the authority to appoint the members as before. I'll leave that up for, for a second if you want to look at it. Chairman, uh, my last name has two L's in it. Okay. Mike Wilman. Okay. Um, I'll fix it. Thank you. Uh, so there, I think, may only be one person I didn't add. If these people have some good reason to believe I don't have their email address uh, on these lists, uh, or the chair doesn't really, more, more important. Uh, they should communicate that. Uh, they can also, if people wanted to be on the committee and aren't there, they should contact the chair, um, who in both cases has the authority to appoint new members. Um, so those are the two uh, really new committees. I believe with that announcement, uh, that concludes the business of the 
called the Bitlaw early, I'm sure the business meeting for this uh, Worldcon. First off, the former Worldcon chair's photo session will be held as soon as we can get things rearranged up here. We're going to need help because where we're here right now is one of the only practical places to do it, so we're going to need hands to move these chair tables off to the side long enough to have chairs up here to take the photo and then put it all back together again. And then once we've done with that, then the uh, Wissons Park Protection Committee will meet in here as soon as we can after we get the photo session done. So I hope people can help us with the uh, logistics of getting this done. Thank you. Uh, there isn't a, the, the, we didn't have the regular attendance list. There is an attendance list up front. If you came in late and, and aren't on there, you should come up to that table to be sure you're listed on the attendance list. And if you want wanted a printed agenda, there's a stack of them over there. And if you don't get it now, it isn't it will they be too late because the rest of them will be thrown away. Uh, there are still uh, new business meeting attendee ribbons at that table. Feel free to take one if you didn't before. Uh, so that concludes all the announcements. Any other items of business or announcements anybody wishes to make? Hearing none, I declare the business meeting. Hearing none, I declare the meeting. Business meeting adjourned.